This October, Stephenville, Texas is the home to the ultimate horseman's experience. The Down Under Discovery Ranch Rally. Explore Clinton's Ranch. Meet his team and his horses. Experience the method firsthand. Learn the advanced training techniques Clinton reserves for his most loyal fans. Up close, in person, and in full. Celebrate with Clinton and his staff with live music and a bonfire to commemorate a once-in-a-lifetime weekend of horsemanship. The Down Under Horsemanship Ranch Rally. Space is limited to 750 people. Don't miss out. Before we get started with the first demonstration this morning, this first one's gonna be, we've got three different age horses here. We've got Diaz, we've got a Yearland filly here that you haven't seen before, I'll introduce her later. And we've also got a Weanland that just got weaned this year. Our young horses act like old horses. Just because we treat them like old horses from day one, we don't let, give them excuses for their age. We, we teach them manners, we teach them right from wrong, we give them discipline, we give them structure, we give them rewards, but everything's very structured and they just turn out, they're kind of like old souls in young bodies, that's what they are. And that's not by accident, that's what happens when you follow the method from the beginning. So in the obstacle course demonstration, we wanted horses of different ages. We had Diaz, we had Molly, the little weanland, and we had a yearling, okay? Uh, I think it was Trixie the Yellen was. So, uh, first one was Molly, and she was, I mean, she just ate the crowd up. I mean, she's pretty as a picture. Big old brown, doe eyes on her, like a little deer. She's got the four white legs, the chrome down the face, and man, you know, she's whinnying out, and ladies start crying. I mean, she captivated the audience, and she did a wonderful job. Jeff worked with her and did a great job, but I mean, cute as a button. She's owned by Robbie Falls, and Robbie uh, absolutely loves that horse, and she's been a big supporter of the method, and. And, uh, it was just fun to see her. Next up, mate, was the circle log. That's, again, another cheap uh, obstacle. Doesn't cost a lot of money. And it's really good to get a horse used to picking up his feet and, and placing his feet where they need to be as opposed to panicking. There we go. Okay, now let's see if she'll jog around there a little bit, Jeff. Just take your time. It won't be a real cadence jog. Jeff will kind of let that rope out some more and get further away from her. Now, if she bumps her foot on the log, no big deal. It's a long way from her heart. She's not going to break her leg off but she's got to learn to take care of her own feet. Yeah. Isn't she cute? Very, very cute. They're not as cute as you, Diaz, don't worry. You're still number one. Look at him, he's all concerned. So again, when, when Jeff worked with her as a foal, he only worked with her for about 30 minutes a day, uh, five, six days a week for about four or five weeks and she knew all the fundamentals. And of that 30 minutes a day, about 10 minutes of that was just scratching on and loving on her and making sure she was comfortable. Do a little lunging stage two there, Jeff. Step in front, there we go. Yeah. So you can tell very early on just how much athletic ability that they've got from the beginning. Righto, Jeff, go ahead and see if you can just have a walk or trot over these logs in a straight line and go back and forth. That's it, run with her a little bit, keep running. Good girl, we'll quit on that. Good job, Jeff, give Jeff a hand, good job. Righto, Jeff, go ahead and desensitize there a little bit. Okay. So you'll notice that we do a lot of backing. Wherever we go, we back them up just about everywhere. Backing is the key to respect. Backing fixes biting. Backing fixes uh, uh, horses that are nippy, okay? The roll tops was the next obstacle we worked on. Uh, Diego was demonstrating with the yearling and about getting the horse to go over the roll tops with confidence and using the thinking side of their brain. So if you have any young horses under two years of age, the kit that you need is called the Fold Training Series. It shows you the imprinting procedures. It shows you all of the halter breaking with the fundamentals. It shows you all of the uh, groundwork with uh, weanlands and yearlands. Everything from when they're born that you need to do with your horse in my method up until the age of two years of age is in that Fold Training Series, okay? So if you're going to have young horses, 
It's your responsibility to learn how to handle them and turn, turn them into productive citizens. Horses hate objects that move and make a noise. So because this one moves, it's going to have a whole different feel to it. So when Jeff actually goes to ask her to go across, he's just going to have a go across the, 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 um, this end, like the width of it, not the length of it. And it'll, he'll do it on the side that's already on the ground. So by desensitizing your horse on all four sides, you've got control of his feet before you ask him. Always get control of their feet around the object before you ask him to go on the object. So he's going to send the horse between him and the end and then across the end. Just take your time. Ah, rubber there. See, she's figured out she gets a rest every time she steps on it. Horses are pretty smart. Can you go any slower? Pretty good there, Jeff. Okay, now why don't you send her across it? Why don't you get on Daryl's? Uh, get on that side there. Yep, that's it. You send her across it. She may not be heavy enough to make it go down. We'll see. Ah, that was a little better. So this gets them used to trailer loading. When, you, when they step into a trailer, that trailer's going to move under their feet, isn't it? When the trailer pulls forward, it's going to shake a little bit. This gets them used to going through water, believe it or not, because it moves underneath their feet. This is how I want my horses to go when they ride outside, when they're going up and down gullies or hills, when they're walking through puddles. Instead of leaping over the friggin' puddle or running up the hill or running down the gully, they need to take their time and place their feet. I love that. Yeah. Just let it rest right there. That's perfect right there, Jeff, because you notice when she pushed it down, she didn't know. In fact, she's getting a little bored now. She's looking over the fence. So um, let's go over here to these other two little uh, culverts over here, Diego. So run over there and do a little bit of the C pattern with her. Run over there with her. Let her out. Just run beside it there. We'll just do a little, we'll wake her up a little bit, do a little bit of the C pattern. Yield. When you get down to the end, do a little sending. Right, I run back. Come on, give us some room. Give us some rope. If you need to whack on her, I want you to whack her a lot harder than that. Like, get in a shit or get out of it. Don't, don't, you're kind of nagging at her too much. Like, if you need to get after her, whip her ass and get after her and get your point across. Now bring it back. We tried to use some obstacles that didn't necessarily cost a lot of money or take a long time to build because people, you know, obviously have budgets and they obviously have, um, you know, not all the resources to do what I've done. You know, my obstacle course, you know, I spent probably close to $50,000 on it and had one of the best guys in the world build it. But this is what we do for a living. You know, we've had that obstacle course now all going on eight years. I can't tell you how many hundreds upon hundreds or thousands of horses that use it. So, uh, but not, not everybody's gonna spend that much money on, on their own private one. So I wanted to show people you could use other obstacles like these plastic culverts that didn't cost a lot of money, were easy to move around, and uh, most of the ladies could handle it themselves without getting their husbands to help them. If they tap them or move them, if they're not gonna get hurt, they're relatively cheap, you can cut them in a lot. Oh, I love that. That was a good girl. Good girl. Now flog her with a little kindness. Flog her with kindness there. Logger with kindness right there. If, I, if I'll stop there and, and rest there, Diego, you take that off her every time. Like she's got that uh, culvert between her back legs. That's, I love that. Okay, move her on now. 
Right, I go the other. Now I have her just so she doesn't stop now. Have a keep a little momentum now. Right, oh. Yield, have a go back the other way. New side, new brain, new horse. Good job. Give Diego a hand. Excellent work. Radio. Now, um, Jeff, has she ever been on this plastic tarp, Molly? No? So we'll introduce that to her. That'll be kind of new. Make sure the tarp is pinned down. Because if, it, because if it's not and they pour the tarp, they can get the tarp caught in their shoe or around their front foot and it can, they can scare themselves and then they think the tarp's chasing them. Okay. So I don't have an objective here really as far as just, just let her find some things. And a plastic tarp is very frightening for horses. Let back off, back off, back off, back off. Just let her find it. Yeah, don't worry about the top. I don't like tops either. I'm not gonna so when she does something, that was a real big try just then. So when they try really good, come away for a little bit. Give them a little bit of a retreat. And then we'll say, oh, you know what? I think I might want to get back over to that top again. See, that's where people keep pushing. As soon as the horse tries to go over the top, they keep pushing. every time you go away from the top when they try like that it builds their what confidence because you're not acting like what a predator does that make sense every time they try you go away you go away from, and, and say hey it, it's it's just like women have been doing this to men for millions of years so they're much better at this game okay but you just got to act not interested you know what I'm talking about, ladies. See, and people say, well, she just cut you off. No, she didn't. There's no rules to this, except build her confidence. It's an object that moves and what? Makes a noise. Now, if she just jumps off this now or leaps off it, no big deal. Just act like you couldn't care less, which I don't. Now, see how she just drugged that foot backwards, that left front foot? If this top's not pinned down, can you guys see how you can get into a wreck very, very quickly? Always make sure it's secure on the ground. Because if, if they back up and they drag that top underneath that front foot, see how there she backed off it? And I said, oh, just come back over here and do a little more work, please. So if I drag that front foot back and get that top caught under the heel of their shoe, okay, or it gets tangled up on their feet, you can get into a wreck very, very quickly. So trust me, don't, come on, move. Don't have it loose. find it if you give a horse a chance they'll find a lot of things because every time I let her come on the top you notice that I let her give her a little rest too don't I it's a release of what pressure walk them outside their trailer rest them in the trailer walk them outside rest them inside I'm just practicing lunging for respect stage one. And what do you know? There happens to be a plastic tarp in the road. What are the odds of that? Ah, there's some sexy lip licking right there. 
Love that. When they'll lick those lips, horse licking their lips is a sign of relaxation. It's a sign of them using the thinking side of their brain. It's a sign of them understanding. It's a sign of submissiveness. Well, once the fear is gone out of a horse, you better get him respecting you. Otherwise, he's going to get very dominant. So I'm going to change sides here. Okay, and go the other way. So new side, new brain, new horse. Remember, new side, new brain, new horse. Go back to the beginning. I'll just kind of do it over this way. I'll try I'll stay here for that camera. Yield. Little resistance there. Notice that now that she's a little scared, she's pulling on that halter a little more, isn't she? That's why these obstacles will challenge your groundwork. See, it's funny, people come here to these 10-day clinics and they're like, my, my fundamentals is really, really good. And I say, is that right? Yes. Okay, let's go to the obstacle course. Then about three hours later, they're crying, want to sell their horse. You piece of crap, embarrass me, drug you all over the field. Because you don't know how good your horse's groundwork is until you start challenging their fear. So the plastic barrels was a great example of something cheap, something easy, it's not hard to get around. So we taught, uh, Luke taught his horse to jump over the plastic barrels and do it in a step-by-step -step fashion. She was a little frightened to begin with, but we took our time, walked through it, and she did great by the end. Let her find it, let her find it. Keep going around, just keep, because she's a little sticky there. What do I mean by sticky? She doesn't really want to move her feet. So if we change directions right now a lot, it'll make her even more stickier. Well, what Luke's got to do right now is free those feet up. She doesn't really have to canter, but she's got to trot with a little energy. So the good thing about using two drums is that you can, you can create whatever distance you want. The more scared the horse is, the bigger the distance you would make between the drums. Metal drums are work too, but plastic ones are good because they can kick them around and it's not going to hurt their legs. And uh, it's just a little lighter. Okay, mate, go ahead and yield and we're going to send it the other way. Right, yeah, now do the sending exercise back and forth, and then we're gonna close that gap up a little bit. Two eyes, he whipped her on the butt just then because she didn't give him two eyes. So we just slowly but surely take away that gap. Right, push it all the way together. Same thing, if she goes to smell it, you'll release that pressure. They'll move around a little bit, don't worry too much. Okay, get her feet moving a little bit now, get her feet moving. That's it. Release, that's all right, that's all right if she cuts you off, it's no big deal. She's a little bit frightened there, it's not a big deal. Let her find it, that's all right. Right, and now to kind of step up that gap a little bit more, shorten up your rope, just let her find it. There it is, that's all right. Just pick it up now, just pick it up and move it quickly. You don't want too much time to go past when that happens because you don't want her to think she got rewarded by banging into it. Now just move her on, act like it never happened. Get ready for her to cut you off, so read the horse. Get your stick up there. Get your stick up there. Come on, get it, get it up there earlier, Luke. Get it up there now, get your stick up there. You know she's gonna do it, so get it up there. There. Keep that stick up in the air as she jumps it. Keep that stick up there. That keeps her off you. There you go. So why aren't we going back and forth? Because we've got to train one brain first. We're working on the right side of the brain. Let's just get this one established first. Horses are like bad boxers. They'll tip you off where they're going to punch you every single time. You're just going to be watching it. You're telling her way over there ahead of time. Do not cut me off. Get your stick up there again now. You're telling her, do not get that there. That's it. Just by holding it up there, most of the time will be all you need to do. You may have to shake it some. So what I liked about that is that when she first started jumping, she was escaping the barrels. That last time she went over it, she was like, she just stepped over them like, ah, oh, this is no big, you know, she just has a, had a lot more relaxation about it. Even though it wasn't real graceful, she certainly wasn't panicking. 
So could you see if we rested her over there now, we wouldn't get any brownie points with the, with the barrels. Can everybody see what just happened there? When they're out of air, rest them either on the object or what? As close as you what? Can get to it. Okay? And if you do that, they'll just, they'll, they'll just fall in love with it. This October, Stephenville, Texas is the home to the ultimate horseman's experience. The Down Under Discovery Ranch Rally. Explore Clinton's Ranch. Meet his team and his horses. Experience the method firsthand. Learn the advanced training techniques Clinton reserves for his most loyal fans. Up close, in person, and in full. Celebrate with Clinton and his staff with live music and a bonfire to commemorate a once-in-a-lifetime weekend of horsemanship. The Down Under Horsemanship Ranch Rally. Space is limited to 750 people. Don't miss out.